What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to The Sav Show. My name is Civilian. I'm the host of the show. And today I'm bringing you a conversation with professional mixed martial artist, Semikade Kakembo. Uh, Sam is based out of Melbourne, Australia. He made his pro debut back in 2021. Uh, he fights out of absolute MMA in Collingwood. Uh, and he is someone that I've grown to um, respect a fair deal over the last couple of months. Uh, spending more time around the gym, going to a few more fights and, and kind of learning more about uh, him and the way he, that he likes to put on a show. Um, one of the things I enjoy or m- m- some of the things that I enjoy most about Sam is the fact that he is uh, a deeply spiritual person who is who who kind of appears to have a very strong connection to nature and just really enjoys being out in nature. Like some of my favorite videos slash content from him is just him kind of like, shadow boxing in the middle of a field late at night by himself. And I just, I don't know, I just love that. There's something very poetic and beautiful and spiritual about that that I just feel it is um, something that I can get around and enjoy and uh, connect with. He is a 6-2 and two pro, six, six wins, two losses. Um, he's coming off of two really impressive fights, one massive, massive war, uh, which he lost to Abdella Biata um, at the end of last year on the Hex Fight Series, and then a win against Michael Barber uh, just a couple of months ago. Both fights pretty hectic for, for different reasons. Um, but yeah, it's good to see Sam back in the win column and doing his thing. Uh, Sam also has like a, a massive affinity for hip hop, uh, something that you can kind of see here. Uh, Wu Tang kind of infused Kakembo uh, branding on his merch. Um, yeah, the guy, the guy's a star. I really enjoy talking to him. I really enjoy being around him. Just a peaceful energy, you know, uh, which is just the more I, the more more time I spend with fighters, the more I am, you know, I seem to be amused by the fact that they can be so peaceful and so violent at the same time. It's just very, yeah, I just, I love it. Anyway, we talk about some of the biggest rap beefs going on in the scene right now, especially Kakembo v Ritoli, which is a huge beef. Everyone's talking about in the streets of Collingwood. Um, we talk about, as I said, his hip hop connection, uh, his family, uh, he, he, the, his love for his family, uh, his connection to his religion and his faith, and um, yeah, just kind of what he has planned for the rest of 2024. Anyway, this is my conversation with pro fighter, MMA fighter out of Absolute MMA in Collingwood. This is Semikade Kakembo. I uh, hope you enjoy this fight. I'll see you around. Let's go. Did you see Lisa? Lisa's in it. I mean, you probably would have known a, a while ago, but um, Lisa just announced her road to UFC. Yep, massive, massive. So exciting, um, bro! Ridiculous. Like, I've seen Lisa. It's funny. I've I've seen Lisa. We came to the gym around the same time as amateurs. Yep. And that's when we ran into mm-hmm. each other. And then seeing everything mm-hmm. that has happened, piece by piece, like the mission when it was easy, when it wasn't easy, and then seeing mm-hmm. where things are at now. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And she's stoked. Yeah. Yeah. I love her energy. Just like so happy go lucky, just kind of bouncing around. Um, And yeah, she gets her shot now. So really cool, really cool for her, really cool for the gym. Um, Yeah. You just mentioned your your kind of like coming to absolute as an amateur. Um, What about the introduction to the martial arts journey? I know you mentioned um, that it was kind of like an off season thing to stay fit. Um, but like, mm. what did you actually do initially? Was it like boxing, kickboxing? Like what was your actual introduction to, into martial arts? Muay Thai, BJJ, both of them on the same day. Really? You know, that you just was went it. straight in. Yeah. Just that like, was bang. Crazy. Balls deep. It was wow. like, they were both on offer and I knew they were both quality. I'm like, fuck, we've got to do them both. You know, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still play soccer or you, you b- bend it? No, nah, no. Nah. I might randomly, very randomly have a kick just for a laugh, but no, I don't play soccer anymore. But how long did it take you to, to bin it? Or how long did it take you to go, all right, I'm going all in on this uh, fighting stuff? It was only a few months, I'd say, because I started competing very quickly. So that took my competition focus away from soccer because I started preparing for jiu-jitsu tournaments instead. Yep. and so on and so forth. And then I had to just make a decision. Uh, my yep. coach spoke to me. And I want to say it was within yep. within four or five months, you know? Yep. And it was like, look, what are you doing? This or that? And when I was asked, it was very easy. It was clear. Wow. Obviously, I'm going to be doing the martial arts, yeah. Yeah, okay. 
How how long you had you been playing football up until that point? Um, yeah, I've been playing for about six years, bro. Six years. Okay. And then in five six months, you're like, all right, this this other thing is is where it's at. Straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I would have known yeah. <laughs> as soon as I started training. But then when the when the answer when the question was posed, it was very clear because it wasn't indecision. It wasn't like, oh, yeah. what do I do? It was like, yeah. I'm going to do that, of course. Mm. Yeah. I love that conviction. Mm. And it served you pretty well up until this point. Yeah, it's a, it's a different journey to soccer. Soccer was fun and I loved competition and I had a passion for it. Mm. But martial arts has been something different. Mm. Definitely. Do you, yeah. were you, uh, ha- have you always been a fairly spiritual person? I would say I was religious you know, growing up, mm-hmm. being that's the foundation mm-hmm. that I was that I was brought up upon. Um, yep. Spiritual, that would have come later in life. I'd say probably around the same time I started fighting around those years when you yep. start going out on your own two feet, leaving the values and the the base or the foundation that you um, had been you know brought up upon, and going yep. and searching on your own, coming across different topics, different beliefs, different ideas. That's when I guess. I got a little deeper into what spirituality and religion is to me. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I, that's kind of what I was getting at. Like the 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 kind of uh, the path to 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 yourself became a little bit more apparent apparent once you started spending more time by yourself and away from like a, a team setting. Because um, like if you're playing mm-hmm. a team sport, it's about the team. It's about the team's success. It's about uh, working well as a team, having fun together as a team. But when you go out and you start doing mm. something like martial arts, it's all about you. It's your your mental strength, your your heart, your soul. And so it gives you more time with those thoughts. Yeah, definitely. And when you mention it, I can see how that lined up with just where I was at in life anyway. That's when I started, you know, leaving home a little more, yep. you know, couch surfing a little, yep. traveling here and there. Yep. That's when I started... That led to me eventually living on my own for a couple of yep. years. Um, and there is always a team element, mm-hmm. especially at this yeah, gym, for sure. you know, which for sure. were, which yep. gym. but there's a lot of room for individuality and that's just because of the nature of the yep. sport. You know, you are at the end of the day, a solo agent. Mm. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, let's go, let's go back a little bit. So, um, <laughs> pro debut in 2021. And then, um, oh, wow. you know, started started quite strong. Three three wins on the trot. Um, had a had a little bit of a um, kind of a, a, a time away last year. How frustrating was that having the you know cancel bouts back to back? Yeah, it was a little frustrating. Yeah, it was frustrating. Uh, but it's something that it wasn't unexpected. Mm-hmm. It had I've, I've had cancelled bouts in the amateurs. Mm-hmm. And a couple, even in the early pro days, it's just that there was always something else that came through. Yep. Just last year was a year where it seemed to not be able to happen. Like, couldn't get those, couldn't get those fights happening. Yep. You know, as much as I wanted yep. to, options would be put mm-hmm. out there, then it wouldn't happen, and it just was one of those things. But honestly, worked out well. When I twenty, you know, when I look back, <laughs> I go, yeah. Not the worst timing to not have too many fights, you know. Had a lot of other shit that I had to work on, so it worked out well. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, isn't that funny how the the universe can work sometimes? Like, you know, we're going to take away this for a little while to give you time actually to focus on this. Got to get through some things, you know. You might not be ready. Yep. Um, but but even though there were um, kind of not as many bouts earlier in the year, you did finish 2023 with an absolute war. Um, one yeah. that I was, I had the privilege of being there live to watch. Um, how do you, how do you feel now looking back on that, uh, Abdullah title fight? Um, uh, what do you take away from it? What's your thoughts on it? Um, yeah. How do I feel now? Now I'm like, I'm, I fully accepted the fight. I fully accept the outcome yep. and I'm happy for it. I did have fun. Mm. Didn't get the result. Mm but I got a lot of experience out of it. And I know that for a fact, <laughs> like, <laughs> I know I that imagine. for a fact. It's like, yeah, it's like there was, there's something in particular that I, that I was able to experience in that fight, yep. which 
was very necessary, something I'm actually very grateful for having. And I know what it's like not having it because I know where I was at before yep. and after. So it did give me that necessary little bit of edge, yep. I would say. Yeah, first time really voicing it, I guess. But that's that's true. It gave me a little bit more of an edge and a bit more of a comfort in the battle yep. that we engage in in this combat sports, yep. uh, which is necessary to really be the best. You know, you need to have that. Uh, so I'm glad. I'm glad for yep. it. Yeah. That was um, ha- ha- would that be the most kind of like intense, l- the longest intense fight you've had? Um, you know, five rounds, uh, twenty five minutes, title, everyone's watching, yeah. like yeah. back and forth, cra- like could have gone either way, like had everyone on the edge of their seat. Would that be the most intense fight you've ever had? Definitely, like just the physical and mental aspect of the fight itself, mm-hmm. everything exterior. That- is ne- is always just all on the same yep. level to me so far anyway yep. but the fight itself for sure like man to go there fuck it was actually it's like incredible you know <laughs> <laughs> to have those to anyone that's gone through a five rounder you know would understand but when you're in those last two rounds in particular especially for myself where it was a somewhat short notice so i hadn't done a camp to to build that five round mm-hmm. tank and I remember being at the end of the third and I was like, ooh, okay. And then sitting on the stool at the end of the third, like, fuck, there's another two. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> like my body is pretty spent. <laughs> you know? like, but then to, to just know, okay, well, I've, I'm going to fight. Like it's not an option, anything else. It's like, well, okay, get the fuck up and let's get mm. to work. It's like good to know what you would do in those scenarios, what that even yep. feels like. It's just intense is the word, yep. you know? But you do just go to a place where you're just working. It's just bang. And not just work, but fight. You know, you just fight. Mm, Let's mm, go. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I loved it. And I'm sure everyone that was in that room loved it. Um, obviously not the, the result you're looking for, but I think, I think it, that'll be a pretty hard one to forget for a lot of people that were there that night. So, um, yeah, congratulations. Um, Moving on, uh, so you had a few uh, out of those kind of cancel bouts. Um, you know, Michael Barber was kind of one of those those people that you couldn't seem to get it across the line for. Um, you finally got to fight him very recently. Uh, that was your last fight. You got the win. Uh, how did that feel? Yeah, good. That was pretty cruisy, to be honest, that fight to me. Like, um, <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't in like a... It was cruisy. Yep. That's the way to put it. It was a fight, that's for yep. sure. But when I say cruisy, it wasn't like I didn't feel much uh, difficulty to overcome in that yep. fight, which is something, again, that's good to experience because I want to actually bring more of an edge to those fights. So I'm glad for that because that's something I was, uh, I, I highlighted as something to improve yep. upon. You know, if you have a fight like that again, you have to, it'll be good to find ways to get to that finish yep. and to just dominate. Yep. Um, instead of cruise, cruise your way through it yep. but yeah, that's that fight I'm glad I got to work on a couple of skills like my path t- to victory would be through the grappling in that mm-hmm. fight but I chose prior having spoken to my coaches to strike with this guy this whole fight just because I wanted that opportunity to develop my striking yep. develop my elbows develop my yep. knees um, and we got the chance to do yep. that which was yep. good uh, yeah. yeah, it seemed like there was a it was a nice little focus on that. Like you wanted to go out there and prove a point mm. with the striking, um, and yeah, you got to do that. Yeah, not so much prove a point, but more more development wise. Because yep. I don't, I'm not going to have that many opportunities to um, have fights. Like every fight is a chance to develop, yep. but the fights are getting harder and harder and yep. harder. So that's what they. That's how. That's just how it's going to mm-hmm. be for where I'm at at the mm-hmm. moment. So it's like okay, this fight here with this worthy opponent is one where I feel I can try and use a couple tools to get better at them for the next few Mm -hmm. fights. So one of them was elbows and knees. Like you don't get to throw them full pelt in sparring, even when you have elbow and knee pads on. So you needed to get that, the timing and stuff. They've they've improved even after that fight, which was good. So Matt. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Yeah. Speaking on uh, fights getting harder and harder, um, your next one coming up against, Jarrett uh, Wilbraham, I believe the pronunciation is. Um, where you at with that? How are you feeling about that? You're looking forward to it? Yeah, man. Looking forward to the fight. Yeah. Less about the opponent anymore at this yep. stage. You know, that's um, something I 
I, I leave to the coaches, but I still engage mm-hmm. in, you know, preparation wise. Mm-hmm. But I'm just excited to have a fight against a, a decent opponent, yep. one where I can actually, you know, bring my A game and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Um, things are going well in life, and I guess when, when. When things are at a certain place in life, I want to see how that looks in a fight. You feel okay. Me? What what uh, do you mind yeah. if I ask? What kind of things? Just in terms of what energy I'm able to bring to training, yeah. to just live in, yeah. to be very present. Yeah. You know, more than yeah. ever. Um, very very comfortable with myself. Yeah. Very happy with the people I have in my life, my family. And still with challenges and whatnot, but just being very present in the moment as much as I can be when I'm not slipping up being a spastic. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's like I know that's where I'm at and I know what that feels like because that is powerful mm. when you bring in that to training, you can feel it. Yeah. You know? And it's like, okay, let's see what this looks like in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, um, you, can, you can only tell so much from social media, but, but it does seem like... Um, from from all the things that I have seen of yours, you you are in a good place as far as like your training, you know, your spirituality, your your kind of connection to nature, your family, uh, your religion, all of those things kind of like you know, are meeting in this like really nice harmonious place that you know can only really result in peace inside. And if you're starting from that place of like peace and like I don't know, I guess like you're content, you know, it's like you don't necessarily need anything if you get something it's great Mm -hmm. but if you start from that place of like i'm happy with where i am right now um then i feel like it's powerful because there's a lot less um i don't know i just feel like there's less desperation in that yeah really it's true it's true and when you when you yeah you said it well when you're not needing much else it's like it doesn't mean you're doing any less or the efforts are any less it's even better You know, you're still doing the same things. You're bringing something different to them. You're not bringing that desperation to these things of like yearning for something. It's like, no, this is just what I'm mm. doing and enjoying yep. it and accepting yep. it. Yeah. Um, I already touched a couple of times on the team there at Absolute and um, everyone seems to be flying at the moment. And, uh, you know, I've brought this yeah. up with, you know, all of the guys that I've spoke to from Absolute. Um yeah, how does it feel in the gym? I know, I know the energy is kind of high. Everyone's kind of like either fighting or you know getting UFC kind of like road two contracts, whatever. Um, there's a lot of really positive things going on. Um, do you want to speak to that at all? Yeah, like it comes in waves. I've started to notice over these five yep. years, and right now we're it's very familiar that we're climbing. Yep. You know, we're climbing. The energy is getting high. Um, people are putting in work, like real work. People are grinding. People are in the gym all mm. day, and you can see who's here. It's like, you know, all the core guys are here, and that impacts everything else mm. in the gym. So that's it. It's good vibes. Like people are positive training, yep. and that's it. Simple as that. You know, we're climbing that, that in the gym be, all day. Must like, be exciting. It's yeah, bro, it's beautiful. Yep. Um, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rat beef going around at the moment. Um, you know, kind of uh, Kendrick taking shots at Drake, Drake firing back, you know, mm. Jay Cole dissing Kendrick, but then taking it down. Even Chris Brown coming out and dissing Quavo. Um, one of the rap beefs that hasn't been mentioned on all the popular forums is um, you and uh, you and Joshua Tolley, um, which I think mm. is, a, is, a, is a bit of a shame. I think that's probably at the top of the tree as far as I'm concerned. Where's, it, where's the beef at? I don't pay attention to any of the other rap beefs, but, you know, when things get personal, you know, I'm just one of those guys, if it gets personal, bro, what can I do but Watch just out. start to take shots back? You got to take shots back. There's Josh in the gym, man. He's actually here poking his head around the corner right there. <laughs> don't speak of my motherfucking names. <laughs> Brother, don't speak of my drop, name. drop five right now. He can't do it. He so can't do it. Where, where, he never where we are on it. the... And I don't think he ever will do it. But I want him to sign. I want you as a judge. And you yep. know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna break breaking news. Breaking news. We're right gonna here, do right a four now. man. Four man. Me versus Josh. Big Al versus Sam Miles. A rap battle. Nice. We, we need a judge. Would love if you could be the judge. I got you. Would love. 
I and got that's you. it. It's the four men. Winner, winner stays on. There can only be one. Yep. That's old a school rap battle. Old school rap battle. Yeah. Old school rap battle. Are we battle. uh? Uh, are we doing it over beatboxing or you want you want some beats? I want some beats, bro. I want okay, some beats. Cool. And I you, you need beats. to be in the car, yeah? I don't even need to be in the car. That's just something that <laughs> that's just something I used to tell Josh, you know? Because yeah, yeah I did. Podcast. I did. Yeah, here we go. See, I did fumble. <laughs> oh, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did fumble on the podcast. <laughs> Out of war, you know. You set the bar down here, but I've been yeah, sending yeah, yeah. memos out, and they know where Wait, I'm at. Like, uh, Ryan Garcia, yeah, sending all those like I'm crazy kind of vibes out and getting in his head. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Playing the long game. My Not man. everyone can see that, brother. Very smart. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> we just need a date. Um, cool. Okay, I'll I'll have a chat to my people. I'll, I'll get people in contact with Josh and uh, mm-hmm. Sam and Alan. We'll, we'll sort something out. Done. So, Done. Yeah. Um. So it, it. All jokes aside, though. Um. Rap is something that your, uh, you know, ha- plays a big role in uh, kind of your journey, your mission, your branding. Um, what's your what's your journey been like with hip hop, and and how did you uh, come to it? Yeah, so my older brother Seg Segwaja is um, has always been like major into into hip hop, into rap from like way back when we were, when we were much younger. And him talking, yep. he would analyze bars analyze lyrics and then that would end up with us just freestyling you know talking mad shit to each other and then that all stopped for ages until i went on the podcast and i fumbled the bag all right fumbled the bag i buckled under the bright lights it happens okay it happens yeah yeah and i based on based on that i actually started putting beats on in the car and just freestyling Mm -hmm. just for fun Mm -hmm. and i'm like Mm -hmm. nah like i want to be able to feel comfortable enough to rap how I rap when I'm alone in front of anyone. You yep. feel me? And yep. that it's, it's funny you asked me this because that actually ended up being very different to freestyling way, way back in the day with my brothers talking shit where once I started putting a few rhymes together, it became less about rhyming and I just started talking some real shit about whatever's on my yeah. mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, bro, and I didn't even expect it. I didn't even realize it and I became obsessed with it for, the, for a couple of weeks and it was yep. very cathartic. It was like mm. I understood the power of what that is. And I'm like, wow, that mm. is something that is, um, yeah, bro. It's like a, it's expression, you know, it's expression yep. in a way. And it, help, yep. it honestly helped me to, to feel much better just in general, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's unchained. Yeah. And, and if you can, it takes a while to like um, let the shackles off. But once mm. you can let the shackles off and let your kind of consciousness just flow, um, yeah, yeah, you can you can unlock some pretty interesting, powerful things. Um, yeah, wow. yeah, it's it's a tool. It's a tool that I I kind of use uh, like freestyling. I, so if I need to like sit down and do some creative work, if I need to do some writing, whatever, whatever I got to do, I will actually just freestyle by mm. myself in my room for a little while, um, just to kind of get my brain open and uh, get 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 like my brain flowing and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really really good for that because it's like, you know, you're just connecting these neural pathways that are just like laying there dormant, um, and you're letting your subconscious, um, just take over. It's amazing, yeah, man. Stop. I'm so glad that uh, that it's a thing <laughs> that I've come, come yeah. across. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, Shout it's out. funny Shout you mentioned that. I've started doing that in um, like in the car on the way to training on the way to start my day on the way back yeah and I'm like just feeling some type of way just put it on and just start it's like yeah such a great use of time bro it's like i love dude, it I the love way it. you explained it is on point yeah well and yeah. truly yeah it's a yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Tool. Mm. yep um what do you love about wu-tang the cross culture uh mm-hmm. yeah the cross culture is one that's it mm-hmm. That's that, that's the biggest yep. one. That's probably what attracted yep. me to it first off, especially the whole uh, black and Asian culture, Eastern philosophy yep. get mixed together, and then yep. they're cool, bro. They're cool. It's very fascinating how well they've done that, and like h- how seamless it's been over such a long period of time. It's it's pretty like when you think about how different those two worlds could be, and how Wu Tang have just like intertwined them pretty seamlessly over such a long period of time. It's actually it's quite fascinating. Yeah, that was that was their calling, bro. Mm, and mm. the RZA, the RZA's book, um, the Tower of Wu, 
pretty cool. Read okay. the book. I'm a fan. I don't think I've read it. Okay. You, you'd enjoy Rate. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. It's like his... Uh, it's like what he learned Bible from... Bible kind of thing? Yeah, it's kind of like what he learned from this. It's I feel it's him putting his version of his life out there on one hand, and on the other hand, it's him sharing what he's learned from the streets as well as his upbringing, as well as his career in music and then hitting those different heights in society and whatnot and just whatever parallels he found, bringing them all yep. together in that book. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like his, uh, what do they call it when you, when you write a book at the end of your career? Like a biology? Biography? No, no. A biography, yeah. Kind of yep, like a yep. biography meets a, um, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway. I, I, I should read it. It sounds very interesting. Enjoy. Yeah. Um, all right. Got a couple more couple more things I want to touch on. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you get out of here because I know Josh is just dying to, um, you know, practice his bars. So. He's writing. He's um, probably writing over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seeing Sam and he's wearing blue, <laughs> uh, but he's got no clue. Uh, that's him. That's, that's Josh right that's there. That's him, isn't it? That's I him. nailed it. Yeah, yeah that's him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to pull you um, through, sir, the way you were going. Don't even so, pull the uh, out. I'm not, Sam, don't, uh, you don't have to respond to that. You don't have to respond to that. I, hey, it's like a, it's like a king to a prince, baby. I'm not even, I don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is not a question, but I just, I, I, as I was kind of preparing for this conversation, I went and watched the, the uh, podcast you did on uh, Fair Dinkum. Um, cool. Yeah, I went and watched that. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I kind of like, I watched a fair chunk of it. I uh, kind of skipped through to different moments. And um, that, I would I would like to say that that conversation was a very, very wholesome uh, piece of content. And I, and I, uh, it was just really nice to see like four young men sitting down and talking about some like real, real shit. And uh, yeah, we're yeah it was cool. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty yeah. open. They're pretty cool boys. And yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, I think the uh, more of that is what I would like to see. Yeah, I feel like it's not something that's easy to do, you know, mm. to just be open, you know, the whole vulnerability yep. type thing. I, I get it. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that's... yeah, it, it's easy to do, I guess. Uh, it's not easy to do, it but probably helps. Easy. It probably helps when there's like a couple of guys there as well because like if it's mm. just like you and me, like it's probably a little bit harder to like fully open up and, and, you know, especially if you're sitting there with them as well, sitting there with them, it's not as much pressure on you. Cause as it like, you know, you can kind of divert or deflect to different people in the room. So it's, it might feel a little bit safer in that setting to be, to be real, real. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that's, have you got to go? No, no, no. It's all good. Chill out. Um, yeah, but I just I just thoroughly enjoyed the 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 level of um, vulnerability and just like how real everyone's been. It was cool, and I just yeah, more of that is all I want to say. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of more of that, um, I noticed you had a little bit of an entrepreneurial side um, back in the day. Um, do you want to talk me through that and whether or not we foresee any entrepreneurial ventures taking place in a, in a post fight career? Yeah, bro, for sure. I, I love business. Uh, I've loved mm. business for a long time. And there seems to be something that has also always been a part of me, you know. Wish I could have yeah. been a little better at it. <laughs> 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 hey, don't we all? Yeah, don't we but, all? <laughs> but I, I've always loved it. It's been fascinating to me from day dot, probably just because I was like, I, you know, how do I make money? I want to kind of make that on my own. <laughs> and mm. then from there, seeing it as like a you know you just it's a system you know product yep. match market all that shit makes a lot of sense yep i remember selling shit on the school bus as a as a kid all that type of thing just hustle on yeah, yeah. just hustle on. yeah so i love it and there's there are some actual similarities between like entrepreneurial ism and and um and like martial arts because you know it go, goes back to that in the individual it's all about you, the individual. How far are you willing to go? Uh, what what work are you willing to put in when no one's watching? Uh, how strong is your mindset? Uh, you know, when shit gets hard, are you willing to keep going uh, for the thing that you care about? Like, there there, there would be a lot of similarities uh, and crossover. Yeah. 
And you know, one thing I've uh, realized across both, and I'm mm -hmm. sure it applies on to a lot of other ventures, but you do need to build a team, you know? You do need yep. a team. And you are yep. as strong as your team in whatever pursuit yep. that you are doing. And it does come down to you too, especially if you're leading the ship or if you're not. Regardless, yep. it's like life is still something that is in your hands. So, yep. yeah, you have to be on point and you have to push through. So nobody's going to push through for you. But yep. a big, big one, especially after I, me and my, my very good friend, my brother Josh Gazzardi, we started an acai business and then we ended up having a meal prep company under the same name. Yep. And we learned, okay, we learned the hard way. Building a team mm. is necessary. It's an yep. extremely obvious and blatant full stop dot point like building a team and having a good team uh, yeah key yeah because it takes it takes um it actually takes like maturity strength and foresight to go i'm deficient in this area so mm. rather than me kind of like battle my way for hours and hours and lose money and lose time and lose energy why don't i just go hire someone same with like you know maybe in fighting it's like you know, I get it. My my nutrition's not great, or my mental my 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 mental game is not great. Let me go hire a um, you know, a, a motivation coach or whatever you want to. What's not his um, performance coach? Performance coach. Let me go hire a performance coach. You know, let me go hire a um, you know, strength and conditioning coach. Whatever it is, you know, yeah. um, to see that you're deficient in something and and going and finding a way to make yourself better at it, um, Ooh. in a in an efficient kind of way. Yeah, I think that's that's a smart way to play it. Massive and shout out to Nadia. You know, she's very good yeah. at what she does. Yeah, 100%. Doing some really big things. Yeah. Um, you know, we've touched a little bit on on these things uh, throughout the length of this podcast so far, but I just kind of want to get your, like, probably some deeper thoughts about um, your family, faith, and religion and kind of what they mean to you as a, as a person, as a fighter, as a man. Um, you know, because I, I, I come... I come from a kind of similar place. I've got a big family, you know, I'm real tight with my brothers. Um, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time together. We share a lot of, uh, share a lot of this life together and they, they mean the world to me. My little sister means the world to me. Um, yeah. What, what does that mean for you? Family, faith, religion, family, faith, religion, family, just to me, damn, is, is, um, your tribe, you know, your people, you know, you have your, your, your roots are there. And for better or for worse, that's like that. That's your founding, you know. So it's worth investing there, you know. Yeah. Um, and there's power there. There's like something really authentic there that you know you can't even really put your finger on. But it's like, yeah, you know, family is family. Very, yeah. very, very, very strong source of a lot of things. Religion to me is very, very important. It's like without it, there would be no. Even on just on that surface level, without it, there would be where would the standard be for mm -hmm. for life? Um, yeah. There's, and then you get to purpose. You know, what about purpose? You know, and when you yep. have faith, you're able to attach something stronger to everything you're doing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. You can. You're not just doing. Let's say you're not just working in the office or working on site or pursuing whatever craft you have for the sake of just doing it. It's connected to a higher purpose you know that that you're yeah, here for yep. a certain reason and this is yeah the, that connection do you is, find it gives you more strength to do those time. things big yeah. time and also outside of those things it says on one side it does give you a a standard on a very basic level which is still a very important yep. one it's a standard yep. you know, i feel like without it shit gets a bit uh curly you know like <laughs> It gets a bit all over for, the for, for lack of a better expression. For lack of a better expression, but that's like, yeah. it's not something to, it, it makes a lot of sense that people are flocking back to these things now, in my yeah, opinion. big time. And then uh, yep. aside from that, I feel like faith, religion, faith, religion, they, faith might go a little deeper than religion, you know, uh, but they should yep. all be on the same, on the I same agree. level. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, uh, cause you mentioned like your spirituality, you, uh, mm. your journey with spirituality might have like gone to another level once you kind of really gone uh, went in on martial arts do you do you feel the same way with your faith or your religion do you feel yeah. like they kind yeah. of went to another level i would say i went away from um like having gone away from the values and the basic parts of the faith that i was brought up in and go and you know keeping a very very open mind something i 
came across that principle very early on, open-mindedness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It didn't take me further from the faith. It took me away and then it took me back. You feel me? Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Like I would have started here. Just flung you straight back. Yep. Yeah. And I went, oh, I was like, oh yeah, okay, cool. And then like you come back here and you understand it on, yep. a, on a very different level. It's not just the surface level rules yep. and regulations. You see and respect yep. all the other faiths for, for what they are. And they're all mm-hmm. very, very similar to the same extent. You know, they're all the same mm-hmm. thing. And yep. yeah. I'm very glad. I'm yep. still on that path, still on that journey. All I know is, yeah, I do go, I do go on and off. You know, sometimes my faith is a little stronger, sometimes it's a little weaker. But at yep. a core level, I always have a very strong belief. Yep, yep, and that's that's the point of it. It's your, it's never going to be perfect. Like, mm. um, you know, that the point is to stay on the path, though, um, regardless of how difficult it gets, and and to to keep on finding ways through. Um, and keep on finding different learnings and teachings and maybe relearning some old teachings or learnings, you know? Um, but, but the point is to just, to stay there. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, Sam, what's on the cards for the rest of 2024? 2024, quality, volume, world-class training, (laughs) as well as... As well as Hella bars. Uh, yeah, brother. <laughs> there was a lot of love. <laughs> a lot of love, a lot of fun. And yeah, staying present as I can be. Spreading that around mm. where I can as well. Yep. Yep. My man. And killing continue... these motherfuckers out there on this scene, brother. Hannibus. Like, Hannibus. I hope I'd say that. <laughs> 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 Um, and keep that tide rising, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, um, I'm gonna let you go now because I know you gotta you gotta go piece up uh, DJ Ritz over there. He's been he's been begging for a for a three piece. Um, so go sort too. him out for me. <laughs> he could get it. He's he looks hungry. Better sort him out. Um, <laughs> uh, Sam, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thanks for chatting. I uh, appreciate. Yeah, your honesty, your vulnerability, and... Oh, Sam's rocking go. the Frozone kit today. The Frozone? Are you scared? He reckons, um, he reckons I look like Frozone. Just I got the oh, that's there. actually hard. Oh, that's hard. That's got hard. Bro, I'll fuck with Frozone. There you go. You hear that? I'll fuck with Frozone. Yes, sir. Brother, thank you. Nah, that's it's hard easy ass. That's easy to talk to you, man. And this was um, pretty cool, bro. Didn't know, didn't know what to expect, but I knew it was going to be a good chat. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, finding that charger, um, finding some, <laughs> finding a nice quiet corner, <laughs> quiet corner. <laughs> this guy follows um, me. Yeah, but we'll, uh, yeah, we'll do it again sometime. Looking forward to your fight with Jarrett. Go get that dub, keep that tide rising, and we'll chat soon. Much love, brother. Much love. All right. See you, Sam. Thank you. All the best. Anyway, guys, that's it for my conversation with Sam. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below. Um, yeah, if you like this podcast, I would love it if you could sub- subscribe. Sub- subscribe. Uh, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, if you want to know more about Sam, uh, you can follow the links below to go check him out and follow his journey on the road to you know reaching his goal of fighting in the UFC. Um, but otherwise, just kind of enjoying a young man, you know, f- following his dream and passion. Anyway. That's it. I'll see you next week on the Sav Show. Let's go.